timeout with five minutes up in the first half? What was that like in the huddle? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he was getting after us a little bit, giving up a few offensive rebounds, you know, those kind of things. We just uh, lost a little focus there and, you know, got it back a little bit. So you think you played pretty well from there on out. Was there, you know, what, what was going on from there the rest of the half for you guys? You know, we were just focusing on defense. You know, our good defense leads to our good offense. You know, that's kind of a motto that we've been trying to, you know, live by this year. And one of those things, we had a pretty good defensive game and correlated on the offensive end. Talk a little bit, E.J., about their physical advantage as far as how difficult it was for you to stay away from fouls, get rebounds, et cetera. Yeah, I had a hard time with staying away from fouls, that's for sure. Um, you know, they went, I think, 6'10", 6'10", 6'8". That's a big physical team. That's, you know, that's as big as we're going to see in this league. And, you know, they did a really good job of crashing the boards every single time. You know, we don't usually see a three like Nezekwezi crashing the boards like that. And, you know, it took us a little while to get acclimated to it, but I think we did a little bit better job in the second half keeping them off the old boards. Cameron, the second half, a uh, comfortable with the ball in your hands? Yeah, I felt, I felt at the beginning I was a little tentative, a little hesitant, and I feel like I got my rhythm back in the second half. 36 minutes for you, Cam. Are you feeling all right after that? Oh, yeah, I'm feeling good. Uh, something you kind of anticipate for the rest of the year? Have you had conversations with the staff as far as you're going to be on the floor a lot playing point? Uh, no, I mean, I just, whenever I get my number called, I'm always ready to go. How big was this for you guys to get back on even keel here in the Summit League, get back to 500 after this win? Yeah, we needed it. We especially needed to get a, a home win for the fans. I mean, the fans have been coming out, supporting us, doing a great job, you know, in the, in the audience, in the stadium and you know it's been tough you know we lost a few at home and finally to get one at home is really good really good feeling uh, Cameron what's it like having a balanced scoring attack nine players for you guys in the scoring column today oh it's huge whenever we can have uh, I think four guys in uh, double figures that's huge I mean that means we're sharing the ball passing it, and getting good shots obviously extremely pleased you know with the result uh, even more proud of our guys of how they responded uh, that's a very good Oral Roberts team, as you can tell, especially by that first 15 minutes and taking South Dakota State to the wire two nights ago. So it's a, it's a terrific win. I want to thank the fans. It was very encouraging to see a great turnout, and, and hopefully we gave them something to come back at. I think the big thing now and, uh, that, that I want to be loud and clear on is, is how is our group now going to validate? We have talked about validating our successes. We're a good team. We're a tough team. We're a competitive team, but we haven't handled success overly well. And we need to, Tuesday's game comes at a great time and we got a, a rival game and a good opponent coming in and we need to be locked in, ready to go and get that next one. I'll take Good questions. It. Talk about stacking successes and trying to end this kind of roller coaster. Is that, is that due to league depth and kind of your youth or is there something you guys can do better? Well, I, I certainly, let's give our league a lot of credit. This is a very good league, a very competitive league. I think, as Jeff, I think I saw your article, or, uh, RPI of 12 out of 31, which is outstanding. Um, but, but make no mistake, so much of what we do, for me anyway, starts and ends with us. And yet we've got some youth and immaturities, some basketball immaturities. And part of that is handling success. And so we need to take care of our part so we're locked in every day in practice and, and for every game. Took your time off, five minutes left in the first half and weren't real pleased. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you play a big physical team like that, you know they're going to get some offensive rebounds. But I didn't think we were doing our part to fight back. And, you know, we are a team. We need all five guys to be doing our part. And uh, we didn't have a couple guys taking care of, of their business. And, um, you know, it's part of who I am to make sure that they understand that we got to be locked in all the time. They responded on some more gusto, didn't it, you? Yeah, and, and we've, we do have that type of group. I'm trying to get them to take more and more ownership where it doesn't take that uh, out of me to get them there. Um, but if that's what it takes in certain moments and certain times, I'm going to do that. You know, yesterday's case in point was a, a, um, a real pointed conversation with some guys and, and very encouraged on how they responded. They kind of had three real strong runs, obviously, to, to start the game and then to cut it to either five or six with, with six minutes left. 
What's it say about your young club that they were able to respond and win that game by 18 points? Well, and, and that's – in this game, certainly there were some moments, but that's what this cl club has done throughout. You go back to Santa Barbara getting our butts waxed and, and then turning around and then competing all the way to the end against USC. Uh, even Thursday night, we weren't very good for a good stretch, but the last 15 minutes we were terrific, and it was just too little too late. So we've got great resolve. We've got tough kids. We've got talented kids. They just need to understand that urgency all the time. Dave, the Denver game, you guys just had three points off the bench today. You have 16, nine players in the scoring column. Uh, where do you hope to see that growth moving forward? Yeah, just continue. We've got capable guys. It was really encouraged. Uh, you know, the production that Dang gave us, Dylan Miller came in and Cotton got the finish. Jared hit a, hit a big three. We've got capable guys off the bench, and, you know, it's just our job to pick and choose those times to get them in and put them in situations to be successful. Gabe Cam, 36 minutes tonight. Lawrence and, and Kai were guys that spent, spent a lot of time on the floor. Can we expect that moving forward? You know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Again, it's a game-by-game -game situation. You know, if anybody has got to validate success, it's Cam. You know, he's had some terrific highs. He's also had a few lows. And, and so, you know, um, I was just talking to Coach Ince yesterday in, in the weight room about uh, Jabril Cox. You know, those two are from a very familiar area, a similar area, both red shirts freshmen. And, you know, Matt talks exclusively how his big worry with Jabril was, was he going to remain hungry and humble? And he obviously he did that to a high, high level. And I want Cam to hear that. I want Cam to see that because he, Cam's talented.